Salam Alaikum. What's good, beautiful people? I am back for an update. All right, so since we last, since I last uh, did my last video, I think I did it on um, people, people that I've met and the crazy folks here uh, that hasn't slowed down a bit is they still, there's still a lot of interesting characters that I'm meeting each and every day um, living and working in Saudi Arabia. So yeah, so an update. So before when I was recording, I was coming from, I was recording from uh, the men's accommodation that they had me staying in. And uh, essentially what it was is they, they have a lot of hotel apartments around here. And I think it's easier uh, to, put, to put teachers up in the hotel apartments because they come fully furnished. And that was kind of like the pit stop for a lot of teachers coming in. There had been female teachers that were housed there temporarily before me for like a few days. But they were a lot quicker in getting another space, unlike me. I think I was there for maybe like a week or two because I've been here for just one week. I've been here in my new space in just one week. So that's the update that I have for you. I have moved. Um, I... In the old accommodations, it was in Camis, which is near Apa. They're about 40 minutes away from each other. And um, now I live about, uh, I, li I live really close to my, to the university that I teach at. Okay, so what else has been going on with me? Um, I don't know if you can hear it, but I got a little Miles Davis playing in the background. Um, yeah, man. Jazz. Jazz when I'm working or jazz on like an, a weekend or whatever is just, it sets the mood right, whatever it is. It's a, it's a good vibe to have. Anyway, so two things that I have been exploring or trying to get up since I've been here is developing an expat community uh, in APA that has proven really difficult for me. Um, I know that there are expats here. Um, but it's just, they're not, they don't seem to have a gathering community. And in Saudi Arabia, it's all about family, family, family. So a lot of things are family focused and geared towards family. Everything else are, you know, for men. And yeah, I'm just, I have, I mean, again, I've only been here for two or three weeks, but I'm just trying to get things started, you know, um, because I know how important it is to have a social life and I know how important having a good expat community is. But it seems like people in APA, at least, keep to themselves. So, um, yeah, that should be interesting uh, in terms of me being a new teacher here and in terms of me being social sometimes. I mean, I'm kind of like a social introvert. Like, I do like to be social, but I'm also very good at being a loner and being by myself and entertaining myself. So we'll see. We'll see how that works. I really don't want to have to travel just to have a good time in Saudi Arabia. So that leads me to the other thing that I've been working on, which is trying to figure out what is there to do here um, in terms of entertainment or having a good time or just being social, going out, doing things. And here are the things that I've narrowed it down to. Uh, number one, I had a whole list of things. Now I don't remember anything. Now I have like I can only think of like two things. That's crazy. Um, well, number one, I'll start with what I know. Number one, Facebook groups. Facebook groups proved to be so incredibly useful to me. And I learned a lot about this when I went to South Korea. Prior to South Korea, I mean, I had been on Facebook since 2008 and never really utilized or understood Facebook groups until I went to South Korea. Um, in South Korea, before going, I did a lot of research on Americans living there, on Korean culture, and on black people in Korea, and I discovered this group called Brothers and Sisters of South Korea. So very helpful in so many ways, and more so than anything in networking ways, but also in information ways. But once I got settled, because a lot of the people in the group either were based in Seoul or did activities in Seoul, and I was in Daegu, which is like on a slow train, four hours away, on a fast train, two hours away. Uh, and it was just, I wasn't trying to go to Seoul every weekend to have fun. Daegu is a huge city. It's the third largest city, but it was plenty of things to do. And so through that, I mean, my 
expat uh, network, my travel network grew exponentially. Um, but then I also learned that there are, I guess, I think it started with South Korea, I'm not sure, but they, other expats who maybe taught in Korea or heard about that group have now developed places in other countries. So for example, brothers and sisters of Saudi Arabia. There are actually two groups. One is, I think, our actual Saudis, and it's spelled, the, the brother and sister is spelled correctly. And then it's the black folk. You know, we got always got to be extra and put a spin on stuff. And it, 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 that one is spelled with an A-S at the end. Anyway, these groups are really used well for networking, socializing, and just gathering information when you're trying to figure out um, how things work in another country for expats. So that's one way, because they post events, but then you can also get up with other people in your city if you wanted to, if both parties are willing. Uh, the other group that is not on Facebook is called Internations. Now, I've known about this for about four or five years, and I think I initially became a member right before I went to South Korea, but I never really utilized it because I felt like the Facebook groups were way more easier and convenient and local. So Internations is for people who like to travel a lot and um, meet up with other travelers. So it's, it's a huge community. It's not just Americans. It's not, you know, it's just people around the world who like to travel and meet new people. So they have events and things like that that you can get into or you know different meetups things like that so they do have active communities here in Saudi but unfortunately again they're all in the bigger cities so they have one in Riyadh they have one in Jeddah they had one they have one in Dammam where I used to be for five days where I was for five days um, but nothing really going on locally or more closer to me so I'm finding that a lot of people who live in smaller towns, you know, they go to Riyadh or Jeddah, and that's not the best way to be budget conscious or to save money. So yeah, I um, so you know, you go through these thoughts in your mind, and in in, in Saudi Arabia, they don't have movies here. Um, they have restaurants. But you kind of have to be strategic about how to go to the restaurants because, like I said before, there's the men's section and then there's the family and women's section. So, and I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that going somewhere by yourself is, for as a woman, is frowned upon. And I'm, I'm all about solo travel, solo life, dining by myself. I have no issues with that. I've done it always, even before I started traveling. So... Yeah, I think you just have to be strategic about it. And again, here being in a small town, small towns have small minds, right? So it's not, you You either have to travel in groups. Um, yeah, you have to travel in groups. So, and like I said, people here seem to say to themselves, so that should prove interesting for growing, um, meeting friends and uh, growing an expat community. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how things are going to work themselves out. Um, and again, you can't, you can't intermingle with men unless they're family related. So I did meet some cool guys when I was staying at their accommodations, but <laughs> again, we can't even intermingle. So it's, it's all so complicated and crazy. So I'm just interested in seeing how things will pan out. Um, yeah, so just a side note, side note and like just adjusting to this different culture and this way of life is that you go through, I have gone through a lot, an emotional roller coaster like every single day. Um, you know, little petty stuff at work that comes up that doesn't even have to be an issue, but some people just, you know. They can't find their chill mode, so it, like little petty things come up at work, or just it's a, like sometimes at work it can be a little unorganized, so that it's frustrating. But I feel like Korea was such a great teacher for me, and and being in this situation that it doesn't bother me as much as it would maybe someone else who is it's their first time, it's their first rodeo, as Dr. Phil says. Um, 
Yeah, you go, I've been going through an emotional roller coaster and it's just been really frustrating. <laughs> it's been really frustrating. Journaling helps out a whole lot. Um, talking to people doesn't really help for me because people are always like, oh, you're gonna be fine, don't worry, it'll be okay. And I'm like, yeah, I know that, but that doesn't ease the situation. So journaling and self-reflecting helps a lot for me. Um, and putting your energy into other things. So while I'm here, I would love to learn Spanish because ultimately I really would like to live in a Spanish-speaking country. Um, oh, so if any of y'all who are watching this have either lived in lived in Spain or Colombia, give me a shout out. Like, let's connect and let's have a conversation because those are a couple of the places that I've been looking at. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, learning Spanish, uh, getting back active, doing, you know, a little exercise and strengthening uh, workouts to keep my body fit. I feel like I've lost weight already because I have not been eating well, I have not been sleeping well, and I've been a little stressed out, like, since I've arrived here. So I feel like I've lost weight. Um, yeah, so I'm just still trying to adjust. I do like the new apartment better. You know, but to be honest, and I shouldn't let this affect me, but to be honest, listening to other people and their awesome experiences um, about the other companies that they've worked for and how they were just like spoiled, more or less, it's a hard, it's a jagged pill to swallow. It's a jagged pill to swallow knowing that there is better and it could be better in terms, in terms of how I, how I, I say I, but I mean we, because I wasn't singled out. Everybody has been getting the same treatment with this company. Um, how I've been handled, like the procedures and things, the money, so many people have taken a huge pay cut uh, in, in coming here and working here. Like they, they, they talk about Saudi like, oh, you can make so much money there. That's not the case for me. Um, normally, you know, they hook you up with a really nice, um, either apartment or, or whole house and they set you up in a compound and, you know, people can get together and in compounds, you know, they have swimming pools, they have restaurants, they have a lot of things, uh, and where you can just dress your normal Western routine self. Um, you know, so hearing about people's stories and the way they used to kick it with other expats and have so much fun, I'm like... Yes, that's what I want. That's what I'm talking about. Why can't I have that? So uh, it's, a, it's a mind game, man. It's a mind game. And then another girl I know who I met in Houston when I interviewed, when I traveled all the way to Houston, paid out of pocket, out of my pocket, um, to go there and interview for a job in the UAE that I did not get. get. Uh, she, they, 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 have, they have offered it to her, and they said that they plan to move her out, but it's like, I don't know what the holdup is, but it's some holdup, but they said they will get her out before the end of the year. She's getting paid $5,000 a month. A month! Like, yeah, I'd like some of that. Can I have some of that? Like, really? It's so, it's, um... So it's, it's a mind F-U-C-K, okay? It's a mind F-U-C-K, and you have, to, you have to constantly check yourself and be like, okay, but that's not you. That's not your situation. You gotta make the best of your situation. Um, and for me, honestly, it gets tiring. I've been making the best of not so great situations for a long time. I make it look real good. I do, because <laughs> I refuse to lose, I guess, but I just, I just want something that's easy for once in my life. That's what I want. I just want something that's great and that's easy and that's 100% satisfaction guaranteed for once, okay? Okay, I just put that out there in the universe, okay? Spirit fingers, make it happen, universe. Um, yeah, man, y'all pray for me because this, this SHIT ain't easy, honey. It ain't easy. Um, but then, again, you have to have that balance, like, Things can always be worse. And other people, there are other people out there who definitely do not have this. A lot of people will want to have this. So you gotta you gotta have that balance for it. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say for an update for today. Um, yeah. 
other than that, things are things are pretty kosher. I'm going to wash my hair today. So y'all not going to see this straight silkiness no more. I'm going to get them curls back, baby. That full, full, full fluffy curl. The natural curl rocking. Um, yeah, I think that's it. All right, then. Deuces.